السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته لا إلم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنه الحكيم رب شهلي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لسان يفقه قولي رب يسر ولا تؤسر وتممه لنا بالخير يا فتاه يا فتاه يا فتاح قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد بعد عضو بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولولا دفع الله الناس بعدهم ببعد لهدمت صوامع وبيع وصلوات ومساجد يذكر في اسم الله كثير Brothers and elders, mothers and sisters in Islam, we are very close approaching the blessed month of Ramadan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us barakah and blessings in this month and allow us to reach the month of Ramadan in the best of our iman and the best of our health. Brothers and sisters, usually the time of the end of Sha'ban is to prepare ourselves for the month of Ramadan. But unfortunately, the incidents and situations that the Muslim Ummah are facing around us, it is very difficult to overlook and not talk about those situations as we as an Ummah are facing many, many challenges. Uh, and, and of course, for many of you who understand where I'm coming from, over the past week or so, people across the globe against innocent men and women be of any culture or be of any religion, and especially for the people of Sri Lanka, while they were offering their prayers in their churches in one of the most holiest days for them. The reason why I mention this as a khutbah, because it is so important for the Muslims to take back an important message, the reason why I bring this, and for many of you, you may think that this, just, this is just a political news that is being discussed in the masjid again, but the reason why I bring up this topic to you, brothers and sisters, and especially for many of our kids who are off from schools and gathered in this khutbah today, is that the reason is that unfortunately, fingers are again pointed towards the directions of those who claim to be Muslims. And that is my biggest concern today is that how do we as Muslims and our children who call themselves to be Muslims stand up high and say that it is not us and this is not Islam which promotes these actions. And brothers and sisters, one thing that we must note and keep in our mind that but nothing could be further from the truth of Islam than such acts of violence. This is nothing to do with being close to Iman and that I bring this topic up. Even though my whole scenario last, last week, at this very time I was in the city of Rasulullah in Medina. The Imam gave the khutbah on the topic of preparing oneself for Ramadan. So I was thinking that next week I will be in my community and I'll share the same message. But subhanAllah, before the next Friday came, we see these incidents occur. But it is so important for us. And the reason why I bring this topic is that unfortunately as Muslims today, we are feeling the backlashes of these actions that are happening across the globe. But how do we stand strong? How do we stand strong in the faith that we do not get moved from our own faith, but we also stand hand to hand with those who are in troubles? Islam does not condone such wicked acts of, of evil, but Muslims across the globe, brothers and sisters, should condemn when such crimes are done in the name of Islam or any other religion. There is no place for revenge or treachery in Islam, brothers and sisters. For many of us and for many of our youth, and I feel this, that sometimes you get pushed to the corner in your schools, in your homes, and many of our kids who are here, they feel this, that you have nowhere else to go but to act in such ways. But there is no revenge and there is no treachery the life of the greatest man to ever walk on the face of this earth. In fact, the Muslims at this time are still processing the massacres that occurred in New Zealand. We have not even gone away from what we are processing that had happened there. And there could be no revenge, no retaliation, and no treachery in the name of Islam. And nothing can justify the massacres that had occurred in Sri Lanka a few days ago. Brothers and sisters, I ask you, and I plead to you to read the life of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Never in his own life that he dealt with any individuals 
with aggression against them. The life of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The Quraysh, the pagans of Mecca, they try to kill the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They expel the Muslims from their own homes in Mecca. They went to war against the Muslims. They did treachery against the Muslims. But with all of this, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had forgiven these individuals. Even when he gained victory on top of them. The day that he entered Mecca, when he was victorious, and the ayats of the Quran, Inna Fatahna, Laka Fatham Mubina, were revealed, the Prophet of Allah وسلم, still, at the most powerful moments of his life, never took revenge from these individuals. And in the seerah of the Prophet, we find two incidents. I don't have time to discuss the details of these events, but I will just give you the names so that you can go back as reflections. There are two incidents in the life of the Prophet ﷺ and his companions. They were known as the largest massacres in the lives of Muslims and Sahaba. The first incident is known as Raji'ah and the second one is known as Bere Mauna. Both of these incidents took place a few months apart from each other. And these incidents had taken place between the third and the fifth year of the migration of the Prophet ﷺ. After Ahad and before Khandak and the, and the Battle of Trenches. In these two incidents that had occurred, not only few, a percentage of Muslims, Sahaba, the greatest of the companions, the Qurra, the orators, the reciters of the Qur'an were all slain and they were all killed in one gathering. More than 70 of the Sahaba of the Prophet ﷺ were all massacred in the place of Bere Mauna. When this incident had occurred and the news had reached the Prophet of Allah ﷺ, the Prophet of Allah ﷺ never took revenge from these individuals. Years later, and I'm talking about the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ, years later, when the Prophet of Allah ﷺ had a front dealing with the leader of Bere Mauna at that time, he never took revenge from them. Even though he had a secret plan to assassinate the Prophet ﷺ, assassinate the Prophet ﷺ but still never avenge. Brothers and sisters, Rasulullah ﷺ, as the greatest man, as the leader of the Ummah of Muhammad ﷺ, upon whom Allah Taala has sent as guidance, he himself never took revenge on behalf of Muslims. So who are some individuals standing up to take revenge on behalf of Muslims? I want you to understand that the success of this ummah can never come because I think this is how we are supposed to do. We have guidelines from the Quran and the life of the Prophet Muhammad This ummah can never excel by leaving the path of the Prophet Muhammad Go back to his life, introspect his actions. Whatever we are dealing now, our Nabi Muhammad dealt with much difficult conditions, but we need to look at the solutions and the actions of the Prophet ﷺ. For those who take the name of Islam and take the authority on their own hands, who have given them the permission on behalf of the Muslims? Brothers and sisters, that's one thing we should also understand. All these actions that do occur end up happening because of revenge and treachery. Is this going to bring peace and harmony? Or are these actions going to bring more chaos? I was sent as the means of islah and rectification for the ummah. And yes, brothers and sisters, there is a difference between war and treachery. And of course, rules are different, and this is a different topic to itself. But we must understand the Quran, the ayah of the Quran that I recited in front of you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in chapter 22, verse number 40 in Surah Hajj, mentions the sacredness of the places of worship. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala defines to us the places of worship, no matter who they are, no matter who these individuals are, the sanctity and honor and respect for the places of worship is something that Islam teaches us. But brothers and sisters, in recent times that we are living in, the places of worship, such as masajid, the houses of Allah, churches and synagogues and you name it, all of these places have become a place which is dishonored by the evil men. This has been dishonored by those who have evil and fasad in their hearts. And why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, chapter 5, verse number 91, The Quran mentions to us that indeed Satan, shaitan wants only to excite animosity and hatred between you. And that's how the evil and the fasad is brought within the hearts of individuals. This is a reminder for all of us again, 
that let's be very, very clear, every act of violence against humanity is wrong. Quran, that when the two sons, one brother had killed the other brother, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it in the Quran, chapter 5, verse number 32, wa min ajli dhalik, min ajli dhalik, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and because of this, katabna ala bani Israel, that we had destined for the people of bani Israel, annahu man qatala nafsan bi ghayri nafsin, who takes the life of someone else, without a cause and without a reason of fasad and fil and creates mischief on the face of this earth كَأَنَّمَا قَتَلَ النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا as they have killed the entire humanity the Quran doesn't talk about a person of a faith or religion it talks about an individual life and humanity brothers and sisters and I said this with bodies we make humans but with souls we make humanity today we are missing our soul today the ummah is missing its ruh it's missing its essence. With bodies, there are humans. With the ruh, there is human point for this khutbah today. It's to keep and make sure that we have the interest of the Muslim and the community in mind with our actions. The actions that were done by certain individuals and whatever the intents were. But brothers and sisters, from today we must understand that our actions, whenever we conduct them, Keep the interests of the Muslim community and the entire humanity in mind before you take your actions. And let me prove to you from the life of the Prophet ﷺ. In the time of Rasulullah ﷺ, there was a man, his name was Abdullah bin Ubay bin Salul. For some of you who have read the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ, this man was the greatest munafiq and the open hypocrite in the life of the Prophet ﷺ. There was no bigger hypocrite Munafiq in the time of the Prophet ﷺ than Abdullah bin Ubay bin Salul that every single person knew even the young children knew that this man was a hypocrite it was nothing hidden but the Prophet of Allah ﷺ, and despite his treason with all of his negative works that he had done the Prophet of Allah ﷺ, never said to kill him in the name of Islam why? And you hear this again and again in the seat of the Prophet ﷺ because it was going to damage the name of the Muslim. And no one from outside knows that he's a... T- and if he's killed, the people will say that the Muslims are killing their own Muslims. So the impact and the image of the Muslim was so important. Brothers and sisters, today we must keep the interest of the Muslim community in all of our actions in front of us. As Allah subhanahu wa says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhalladina amanu, kunu qawwamina lillahi shuhada bil qist. Allah subhanahu wa mentions to us in chapter 5, verse number 8, O oh, you believe, stand out firmly for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be just witnesses. Meaning stand for that what is right. Now, brothers and sisters, let me conclude quickly. What is the solution? Where do we take the situation from? What are the next steps that we really need to move forward towards? Number one, Muslims, people of true belief in Allah and His Rasul, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, believers of Quran, the believers of the Day of Judgment, Muslims must call out others when, whenever any evil occurs on the face of this earth. Whether it is a Muslim, whether it's a non-Muslim, we must stand firm for justice as Allah commands us in the Quran. It is our responsibility. No matter who the perpetrator, no matter who the wrongdoer is, as a Muslim, we must stand for justice. Number two, brothers and sisters, there is a day of judgment where Allah and final justice from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number three, we must reach out to our fellow brothers and sisters in humanities from all over the place, and especially from the people in Sri Lankan communities, and send our condolences. We take this as an opportunity to let them know how Islam views these evil acts. Let them know what Islam stands for. Even in warfare, brothers and sisters, women, children, non combatants places of worship, all of these places should remain unharmed and there is no place in Islam for what has happened in Sri Lanka in the name of Islam, brothers and sisters. Mobilizing help from our side for families who have lost the loved ones. We embrace, and this is something very important, we embrace our disagreements with respect and compassion. And I repeat this again. If you don't take back anything, then at least take back the statement with you. We embrace our disagreements. There will be differences. 
sometimes in our faith, in our dealings, in our political instincts, anything, we will disagree, brothers and sisters. We embrace our disagreements with respect and compassion, not with bombs and bullets. This is something that a Muslim must represent, that we learn to disagree and embrace our differences and sisters who are face- facing a lot of backlash especially in Sri Lanka and the neighboring communities now. For many years they were going through massacres. You must know for them, hundreds and thousands of them were killed because of them being Muslims, but now they are receiving a lot more backlash because they are Muslims and therefore the Ummah Muhammad Wasallam. So make dua for those who are facing all of those challenges. Make dua for the peace and security for the Ummah at large. For indeed, brothers and sisters, this is the least that we can do to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring ease and comfort in the lives of all. Brothers and sisters, I finish off with this. And I conclude by saying this. That indeed, the times are very trying and testing. Rasulullah sallallahu said, a time will come on the face of this Ummah that you will hear Al-Qatlu, Al-Qatlu, Al-Qatl. Killing, killing, and killing. That's the only thing that you will begin to hear from the people. And brothers and sisters, a time has come very close to this. For us as an ummah, it is our responsibility to stand for what is right and what is correct. As Muslims, to speak against any injustice and for, for standing up for what is correct, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us strength today in a very trying and testing time for all of us that our iman and Islam has become a very huge test for us. But we ask Allah to give us strength in our iman and Islam. To face the challenges and the difficult circumstances that they are going to be going through in their lives just because they are known as Muslims. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring peace and security on the face of this earth. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us barakah and blessings in the last few days of Sha'ban and allow us to reach the month of Ramadan and allow us to make this coming month of Ramadan a means of salvation for us and a means of our, our coming closer towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ma alayna illa al Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah Muhammadan Rasulullah Hayya ala salah Hayya ala salah Hayya ala al-falah Hayya ala al-falah Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar La ilaha illa Allah Alhamdulillah, Aliyah, Zati, Azim, Sifati, Sami, Simati, Kabir, Shaan, Jalil, Al Qadr, Rafi, Zikri, Mutail, Amri, Jalil, Burhan, Fahim, Al Ismi, Gazil, Al Ilmi, Wasil, Hilmi, Katil, Gufran, Jamil, Al Sanai, Jazil, Al Atai, Mujib, Al Duai, Amim, Al Ihsan, Sari, Al Hisabi, Shiril, Al Qabi, Alim, Al Adabi, Aziz, Al Sultan, Warshad, Walla, Ilaha, Illa, Allahu, Wahdahu, La Sharika, Warshad, Walla, Sayyidana, Wa Maulana, Muhammadan, Abduh, Wa Rasulu, Al Mabusu, Ilal Aswadi, Wa Al Ahmar, Al Manut, Bishar, His Sadri, Wa Rafi, Zik, Wa Sallallahu, Alihi, Wa Ala, Alihi, Wa Ashabihi, Al Ladina, Hum, خلاصة الأرب الأرباء وخير الخلائك بعد الأنبياء أما بعد فيا أيها الناس واحد عليكم بالسنة فإن السنة تهدي إلى الإطاعة ومن أطاع الله ورسوله فقد رشد واهتدى وإياكم والبدعة فإن البدعة تهدي إلى المعصية ومن يعص الله ورسوله فقد ضل وغوى وعليكم بالصدق فإن الصدق ينجي والكذب يهلك وعليكم بالإحسان فإن الله يحب المحسنين ولا تقنطوا من رحمة الله فإنه أرحم الراحمين 
ولا تحب الدنيا فتكون من الخاسرين الا وان نفسا لن تموت حتى تستق من رفقها فاتقوا الله واجملوا فتلبوا وتوكل عليه فان الله يحب المتوكلين وادعوا فان ربكم مجيب الداعين واستغفروه يمددكم باموال وبنين اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم فمن يعمل مثقال ذره خيرا يره ومن يعمل مثقال ذرة شرا يرى بارك الله لنا ولكم في القرآن الذين ونفعنا وإياكم بالآية وذكر الحكيم استغفر الله لي ولكم ورساء المسلمين واستغفروه إنه الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله ارسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساعه من يطيع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يعصيه فانه لا يضر الا نفسه ولا يضر الله شيئا اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها 